Welcome everyone to our uh, first FAIR session on uh, tips and traps on the road to uh, FAIR software principles. My name is Patricia Hatterich. I work um, for the Digital Curation Center based at the University of Edinburgh. And I'm doing the session with uh, Moran, um, who's uh, uh, based in, in beautiful Paris um, at Software Heritage. So, um, what uh, are we are we trying to do with the session? Like um, the the keynote and uh, some of the other sessions that had like fair software in their title, uh, we're trying to bridge between communities and the community of like fair experts, people that uh, work a lot in the uh, in the fair area, mainly around um, data. That's people like me and um, the. Uh, the communities um, that working on are working on software um, and especially uh, in this context research software and bringing them together similar to what the um, yeah what, what you've heard already in, in various keynotes if you've attended um, the previous days. So what we're doing in this little session is uh, we are introducing a report that the FAIRS FAIR project um, has published on the fairness of software. Um, especially the uh, focus is on the recommendations for um, developing the FAIR principles of software that um, are picked up by, the, um, um, by various groups that are, are taking this forward. And we would like to um, get, make you work a little bit and get your your feedback um, on the recommendations and ideas um, how to take this forward. So um, there is a bit of uh, interaction at the end when we are done with the presentation. Um, so software uh, in research can have various roles. Um, it can be the tool that you use to analyze your data. It's um, but then that also makes it a major re or a research outcome or a result. Um, and um, in some cases, for example, if you're researching um, video games or something, it's actually like the, the code is the, the object of, of your research. And um, because it plays that, uh, that role in open science, um, uh, the, it, it should be shared in um, open repositories, for example, software heritage. Um, although um, we might come back to that uh, uh, later that like fair doesn't necessarily equal open. So there is a role for um, uh, for closed software here as well, but um, as part of the wider open science, open research umbrella, uh, we definitely see software playing a role there. Um, so uh, why, why are we here? There's a plurality of uh, needs that various stakeholders have. Um, um, when it comes to software, if they want to, to, to share it, to archive it, to reference it, um, a lot of like, well, many organizations might want to, to track um, what is developed in their institution um, and um, have the overview of that. And um, FAIR software um, actually could support all of these needs. Um, and I think, no, not, not yet. Um, so uh, as has been mentioned already, um, software is not just another type of data. It is um, a bit more complex as we've heard already. And that is recognized in um, uh, various recommendation papers out there. One of is for, of the Fair Practice Task Force under EOSC that has uh, outlined recommendations. I think Neil, he, who's here, is one of the authors there. Um, and then um, France, for example, has a, a, a task force as well that um, has a recommendations to make sure that the specific nature of software is recognized when we're talking about the the uh, wider context of FAIR. And um, we in FAIR is FAIR, we're mainly uh, referring to the uh, European Commission's Turning FAIR into Reality Report and explicitly their recommendation 16, which um, um, yeah, recommends to apply FAIR broadly um, to a wide range of objects, including software. 
and that's basically uh, where we are taking the inspiration for our work for. Um, and uh, as in Fair's Fair, we're looking at the wider fair ecosystem. Um, we're looking at repositories that support um, fair data. And they are based on software. We're looking at uh, the fairness of digital objects, um, usually data sets to start with. We are looking at fair enabling soft, uh, services. And as you can see here, if you can see my cursor, um, we're looking also at, uh, at software as a um, standalone, um, research software as a standalone digital object that uh, plays a role uh, in, the, in the ecosystem. And then I hand over to Moran, who's going to talk to you in a bit more detail about our report. Thank you, Patricia. I think that uh, um, I will uh, share maybe my screen. Uh, so I'll um, not do the next side thing, if you don't mind. <laughs> I've, I'm changing my mind every few seconds, sorry. Uh, so I, I'm going to share the screen now and uh, hopefully it will be okay. <laughs> And you're not going to move. Yes, you didn't move anywhere, so I'm, I'm good. Uh, so that's our next slide, but I don't need to say next slide. Uh, we did this um, uh, thorough report, which is the assessment report on fairness of software. Um, and it is divided into three parts. The literature review, where we uh, kind of studied um, different um, literatures that talk about best practices for software and fair software in particular. Um, we did a state of art overview of the current solutions and challenges um, in research software. And we ended up this um, report with 10 recommendations for the creation of fair guiding principles for research software. So we have um, the RDA for SOAB and NRISA, a working group that is working on these principles and trying to write them down. So the recommendation were kind of a, a first step to how and what shouldn't we forget when trying to uh, write recommendation, or try to write or create the fair principles for research software. And this is part of the activity that we'll, we'll have here today. So to kind of uh, describe a little bit what are those three parts. First, the literature reviews, we surveyed nine publications and analyzed um, these publication on relevance, achievability, measurability, and benefits that the FAIR principles could be uh, seen on those, on those uh, different publications. So our uh, measurement was about, was if it was observed as a small subset, um, that's the yellow one, a medium subset, the middle one, two to three publications and a large subset would be three papers or more. And as you can see here, you have kind of a non-available so that uh, didn't appear and, um, and some green and some orange uh, to kind of map the fair principles for data into what it's already, what, what we do see in the literature uh, about software. Beyond the FAIR principles, we did um, notice that most publications have things that aren't um, in the FAIR principles, uh, for example, interoperability and dependencies and execution environment, uh, the usage of version control systems, that's something that doesn't appear on the FAIR principles actually, and uh, credit and attribution, testing and software quality and long-term access. Those are things that are beyond the FAIR principles and might be things that we want to include in FAIR principles for research software. Then with the state of the art overview, we um, kind of looked around what exists to make software FAIR. And this is information that sometimes is missing in uh, different communities. There are archives, uh, infrastructures for software, so archives, we have Software Heritage, we have Zenodo as well. There's a good integration between GitHub and Zenodo. Um, we have publishers that do publish software and have a way to um, uh, make software more fair in their publications. Um, there's registries and aggregators that, uh, that kind of shows a software as a first class, first class citizen. So it is important to see how this 
part of the infrastructures that are in place are used by researchers. There's also research software training uh, with the carpentries, but I imagine that there are other um, examples. And in the uh, existing components and mechanisms, we have uh, different possibilities to identify software. Um, extrinsic identifiers would be the ones that are given by a registry and are maintained from um, the registry, like uh, ARC IDs, DOIs, SWMAT IDs, ACL CL IDs, or RR IDs. And we have also intrinsic identifiers that are calculated from the source code itself. And we have uh, the, the SWEET, the Software Heritage ID, that kind of uh, uh, provides that. Um, uh, for software. We have metadata vocabularies, but that's only two that are academic uh, vocabularies and uh, this very uh, small subset of what is out the landscape of metadata is kind of huge. It's uh, at least 10 or maybe a much more than 10. I'm, 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 that's also a very small subset of what, what's out there. But metadata is important to make software fair and it's important to know that it exists. For licenses, we have SPDX, and uh, we have also artifact evaluation and badging. I didn't want to uh, go through all this slide, but at the end, I did go through all this slide because I think it's important to know that there are things existing at the moment that researchers are not necessarily aware of. Um, next is uh, kind of shamelessly uh, promoting software heritage because I am a software heritage engineer. And I think that, uh, um, that it's really important to know that it's a possibility to save your code very easily. Um, and even the code of other people, like you can do with internet web pages with archive.org, you can do with archive.softwareheritage.org the same thing for code repository. So just by adding a URL here in this box, you submit and you can save publicly available code. The advantages are that all the development history is saved that way. And um, you can use URLs from different platforms, not only GitHub, you can use GitLab, Bitbucket, or, or um, different uh, kind of uh, platforms, even not only Git, uh, SVN, uh, Mercurial is also accepted. Um, finally, another advantage is that then you can use a PID to reference these specific pieces of code and the, um, you don't need to um, kind of generate um, a DOI for, for software that is not yours, for example. So if you want to reference software with, which is not your software, you can do that with this uh, uh, SWID, which is a persistent identifier. We also identified in the uh, report the challenges that, um, that are out there for which FAIR can be an answer to. Uh, so here are some of the uh, challenges, um, uh, te technical challenges like software dependencies and environment, uh, documentation, accessibility and licensing, and maybe some more high level um, challenges like time and skill, uh, quality control and software sustainability and management plans. There were all, also other challenges which are nicely identified in the FAIR for Research Software Working Group uh, subgroup one report. And I can uh, give you the link later on. Um, and uh, this is important to put in place because if we want to have FAIR principles to, to, for research software, we need to ask ourselves why, what were we trying to solve? So these challenges are some of these um, questions that we have to keep in mind. So the last part of this uh, presentation and the report is the recommendations and adoption of the recommendations. Uh, we used the RFC 2119 uh, for must, should, and may uh, requirements. Uh, and we need to keep in mind that all requirements um, that we are adding as a fair principles, um, they are extra requirements that would be or should be enforced. So we need to, to, to kind of acknowledge that researchers are already facing significant challenges when developing or maintaining software. And uh, we need to have some kind of clear and immediate benefits when doing those recommendations. So doing the uh, principles, not the recommendations. So now when we go to the recommendations, 
I am going to um, propose to you a feedback exercise that we have on our um, Google document that Neil shared in the chat, but uh, maybe Patricia or Neil can share it again. So in this feedback exercise, we are going to ask you two questions. And while I'm going over the recommendations, I can invite you directly to the document and start uh, doing that. And this, um, for these recommendations, uh, we have two questions. The first one is the recommendations. Again, it's a meta recommendation on how to write fair principles for software. And the second question is how to satisfy this recommendation when writing it. So propose actions on how to satisfy or propose ways to verify that the, the recommendation is satisfied. So those are the two questions. And now, um, I hope you're looking at your document and you're starting to read. We had um, separated this to three uh, teams, the G team giraffe, and then you'll see the other animals we've chosen. But uh, I think we are not enough to be separated into teams. So I just ask you to go over the recommendations that most interest you and kind of answer. I'm going to start reading the recommendations, but you can read it uh, by yourself. Uh, so the first recommendation is uh, fair principles for research software outcomes must be produced by taking into account the specific nature of software and not as just a simple adaptation of the fair guiding principles for data. Okay. The second recommendation is applying principles and recommendation to software demands effort, time, and skill. The realistic nature of these principles must be considered. Third recommendation, a large community forum must be consulted when writing the principles. This community forum, forum must include stakeholders from different disciplines and with different roles looking at software in all its aspects, as a tool, as a research outcome, and as the object of research. And the fourth re recommendation for Team Giraffe that we don't have here is existing infrastructure that already provides solutions for software artifacts should be asked to review the fair principles for research software. So those are the four uh, first recommendations that are kind of high level for the entire principles document that we gave to Tim Giraffe that we don't have here. But um, I invite you to do um, agree or disagree on the document if you agree that it is important to follow these recommendations and ways to satisfy those recommendations. I want to uh, continue and um, with the three next recommendations that are uh, specific to each one of the principles. We have recommendation number five, each principle must be relevant for software source code. Number six, each principles must be achievable for software source code. And uh, number seven, each principle should be measurable for software source code. Detailed explanations of how a measurable principle is measured must be available. So this was for team elephant, but we, the elephant in the room that we are not enough for teams. I hope you are looking at it and uh, answering it. I'm not on the document, so I don't know, but I'll, I'll know in a second when I end up reading all of these. So the three last recommendations are, again, for writing the fair principles for research software are, uh, number eight, each principle should contribute to software recognition in scholarly communication. Number nine, each principle should contribute to the curation quality of the software resource. And the 10th uh, principle, the last one is each principle may solve one or more research software challenges. As you saw on one of the slides, I'm going to repeat these challenges here. Uh, that's only an example. We can imagine other challenges, which are credit, reproducibility, sustainability and management, documentation, quality control, quality metadata, licensing, and more. So this was supposed to be for Team Zebra. Go, go, Team Zebra. <laughs> so we are all giraffes and elephants and zebras here. Um, I'm going to go back to the slides for the feedback exercise. And maybe 
we can discuss it online because we are uh, not a lot of people here and maybe we can get your feedback kind of vocally on this session. Someone want to say something? There's plenty of activity in the document. Um, so, yeah, which is <laughs> great to see. Excellent. Oh, wow. Well. So mainly agreement on Team Giraffe. Team Giraffe is fine. Like the first four recommendations uh, no one has quibbles with. Uh, but then for each of the principles, it's interesting that there are like um, different op opinions. And I don't know if the so one might just be the phrasing that we've used software source code. Um, and maybe Moran, you can talk to that a bit more because you're in, within like fair for uh, research software, the, the group you're actually leading the whole group that's trying to define uh, software slash research software. So uh, I don't know if you want to. So I, for, for leading the group of uh, sub, we, are, we have on the fair for research software uh, working group, we are divided into uh, four, we were divided now we are the last group that didn't come up with them, something yet, but we're on the verge of having a report out. Uh, we were divided into four uh, subgroups, and one of it was uh, defining research software. I don't. It's not about the technicality of what software kind of if it's a source code or not source code. It's more about uh, which software in research is should should be acknowledged as research software, and is kind of difficult because in different disciplines it's it's uh, different. Uh, there, are there are disciplines where only published software or a software that is an outcome of the research is considered research software and, and the rest is our tools that are not considered, the tools used are not considered research software. And, and, and so we did this, uh, this kind of, of work um, about the prioritization of source code. Uh, this is something we do talk on the report, the importance of having the knowledge uh, available as part of FAIR. So this is maybe a question that, Patricia, you said at the beginning that we might talk about that, about the openness of the software. So here as well, there's a divergence in opinions of what uh, is software that isn't open, open in the sense of having the source code available. Uh, can it be uh, FAIR? My personal opinion that it's easier to have FAIR software if you have uh, the source code, because in the source code, you can have a lot of elements and transparency and having the knowledge, even if it can't be reused in the sense of recompiled and re-executed, you can have this information, um, uh, well, available and the ideas of the software can be uh, reused, even if the, the compilation itself and the execution of the software is can't because everything is kind of there's a time for everything if you created a software now doesn't mean it will work indefinitely and there's a kind of a reproducibility crisis on on that part so that's why i personally would prioritize source code but i agree that it may might not be the idea of everyone um, considering fair software do someone want to express themselves on this thing? Because we have uh, three left, three, four minutes. Um, just in terms of um, measuring things, I think I'm always, so I, in some ways it sort of seems essential to be able to measure something in order to say whether it is something or not. But on the other hand, it's impossible to measure. <laughs> and I know there are, there's currently a lot of, um, uh, debates going on with regard to data in this, in, you know, in this respect and, and measuring fairness generally. So it sort of seems to me that it's sort of a, it, in, in some ways it's, um, it's a goal, but it's just really hard to achieve, I think. I agree with that. Uh, we also have this notion that if we, if we have if we measure it, there's the, there's the idea that software can, that one software can be more fair than another software because 
the, it answers kind of uh, four principles out of 10 and the other one just three principles after 10, but it's really difficult to assess which measurement really uh, improves the software fairness. So I agree that the, the, the question about measurement is really um, complicated um, and might be in detriment to the fair principles. Um, uh, to, to be frank, my opinion changed since I've we written this report. It's been written for in September, October, and we had mm. lots of discussions since then. So I think that I, I do agree about this uh, item on the on the recommendations. Anyone else want to say their opinion? Yeah, I, I agree on that as well. And it's because whatever measurements you pick will be very narrow and then people would squeeze in just to get the right score or whatever, and then it would be counter to the whole principles of FAIR. So you should rather think of it more like evaluate or consider each of the principles rather than trying to measure them. So if have they all been considered, right? Maybe you, you just justify, well, this is a mobile app, so we're not going to do that thing, right? So I said, have I considered it. it that's a good remark. They evaluate or uh, change the wording. Measure is really kind of uh, really narrow, as you said. Uh, kind of opening up this um, is it would be uh, preferred. So I see that we have two minutes left, right, uh, Neil? That's the count. So I'm going to um, end up our discussion. It was very interesting, and I think that it's also very interesting in the document, and I really appreciate that, and thank you for that. Um, I want to tell you that you can still get involved in writing the fair principles for research software because uh, the group is still, uh, well, we, we are just starting to write it and in a few weeks, the consultation uh, period will start. Um, so come and join us in the fair uh, for research software working group, which is a joint RISA, RDA and Force 11 working group. There's also some reports that were published that are interesting to see. Um, and um, that's it for us today. So thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Patricia, for the lovely introduction. Uh, and thank you, Neil, for being here. Uh, Neil is also a part of the steering committee and chair of the Fair for Research Software Working Group. And thank you, Moran and Patricia, for running a really great workshop. Let's give them a virtual round of applause.